Hey guys, welcome back to the leadership series. This is Leadership Demands 3.7 and it is how to endure to the end. So let's get started in the scripture. Luke 8, 11, and then skipping down to verse 15, which is summarized with keep the word of God and bear fruit with patience. So this is a parable and I'm skipping a bunch of verses. You can go back and read it. Verse 11, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, but the ones that fell on good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. That patience in the Greek is hupomone, to patiently endure under trial and pressure. And recall that is through God's power. Second Corinthians 1, 3 to 7, God comforts us through it, and we have consolation and salvation that helps us endure, because we keep that in mind. So, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolations. Okay, so we're going to run down and look at this because you might have noticed in the text that certain comforts and comforted has a little um, footnote marking of one, two, something like that. And then certain sufferings have different footnote markings because they mean different things. So I want to make sure that this is really clear of what we're talking about. So we're going to go through the Greek and I'm going to go back and hit it again, explaining the differences. Okay. So tribulation, ellipsis, internal pressure as a result of present tribulations with which appear to have no way of escape. So this is that emotional, I'm going to explode, it's so stressful, okay? Comforts and consolation. This is perikaleo, which is a calling to one's aid, a comfort, someone being close beside, a personal exhortation that is evidence that stands in God's court, someone that can personally deliver God's verdict, a holy urging used of the Lord directly motivating and inspiring believers to carry out his plans, especially in delivering his particular message to someone else. It can be a warning or a comfort. And then comforted or consolation, the second use is very similar. It's its cousin, but it is paraclesis which is a calling to one's aid, an encouragement through comfort, a person that is given to be close by and deliver God's verdict with a holy urging and reveal how the Lord weighs in the relevant facts, a holy urging that causes believers to carry out his plan, that which causes comfort, consolation, encouragement, exhortation, or admonition. And then sufferings, the third one is pathema, which is strong feelings from sufferings that befall a person. Afflicted is thilbo, to press and squeeze, to rub together, to compress. This is the action that causes thalipsis, remember. And then it says enduring, which is hupomone, and this is patient endurance under trial and pressure through God's power. So we're going to go back and I want you to think about this when it says parakaleo that someone is the first use is someone personally delivering the Lord's message. The second use is a complete comfort, consolation, encouragement, um, exhortation, which is like a sermon, and then admonition, which is instruction. 
Okay, let's read it just one more time. Blessed be the God of the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. So the God, God of all comfort, he's the one who is giving personal messages. This is what's going to happen to those who are faithful post-war and maybe pre-war for some of you. You're going to start hearing from the Lord as I do, okay? And who comforts the same word, us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. So we're going to be able to give personal words of comfort. Some will come from the Bible. Some will be delivered to you, and you should give them to the person that God tells you to. Um, with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted. So the comfort, this is that encouragement, which we ourselves are comforted by God, told personally by God. For as the sufferings, remember the, the heartache from the suffering, the deep feelings um, of Christ abound in us, so our consolation, this is our encouragement, also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Consolation, instruction and encouragement and salvation, which is effective for enduring. Enduring is hupomone, keeping on with God's power. The same sufferings, which is pathema, the deep, heavy feelings that we also suffer, same word, deep, heavy feelings, or if we are comforted, that means personal words and personal encouragement, is for your consolation, that is the actual act of being encouraged, and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, the deep emotional feeling, so also will you partake of the consolation, the encouragement. So I hope that makes that a little more simple. Now, Romans 8, 25, focused on the hope of heaven, make us wait eagerly. The focus on the hope of heaven makes us wait eagerly with perseverance. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. That perseverance is hupomone. Romans 8, 18 to 19, focus on the glory to be revealed in us. So, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. So that is suffering. Again, hupomone. Patient endurance with God's power to get through it. Romans 5, 1 through 5, perseverance because of peace and grace, rejoicing in tribulations confidently. So therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace and with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace, which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So the tribulation in this, we glory in our tribulation. This is the lipsis. This is that internal pressure because we feel like there's no way of escape. And then perseverance is hupomone, to continue under a lot of pressure through God's empowerment. All right, so then 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8, diligence to faith, virtue, knowledge, and self-control will give way to perseverance. Okay, but for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the way to perseverance is all of these characteristics, right? 
which lead us to godliness, which leads us to love. So hupomone is that perseverance that's being spoken of, patient endurance under trial, under pressure, through God's power. And then tribulation is the lipsis. Again, that inner stress and feeling like you're going to explode because the the stress is so much from the exterior pressures you feel in a way of escape. So again, I have a graphic that's going to summarize all of those verses, okay? How to endure. And it's a cycle again. So first you start at read the word and listening. This gets you to keeping the word and bearing the fruit with patience. What kind of patience? Hupamone. So then I'm going to start under that with God. God gives the comfort through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit motivates us to do God's plans. That gives us the hope of heaven. Okay? Now, coming in this whole little central section, we have God also, through his love, makes us justified by faith. This guy is showing faith. Walking with a stick, but he can't see where he's going, right? Now, Coming back up, we have Jesus who gives access to faith, but how does he do it? Through God. So if we have to go down and then we have to come back up and look at him and then go over and we see God, right? And then also Jesus gives us peace with God, okay? So this is all like a group of information that has to work together. The hope of heaven, which we got by the Holy Spirit motivating us to do God's plans, gave us the hope of heaven, right? But that hope of heaven, we hope for what we cannot see. This hope causes perseverance through faith. Okay, so that brings us back down to faith boy. So faith, how is faith functioning? Faith stands on grace. Grace is a gift from God through Jesus. Now let's follow faith boy. Because of faith, we give all diligence. So we do all the things we should. And add to faith virtue. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives virtue. Okay? Then we're going to come around the corner here. And that, to, to faith and virtue, we add knowledge. So we have to read our Bibles. We have to have knowledge of who we say we believe in and the doctrine of which we say we believe in. Then to that, we add to the knowledge, we add self-control. That's saying no to some things. That's saying, I can control my feelings. I can control my words. I can stop certain habits. I'm going to make an effort to not do the things that in the Bible says we are not supposed to do, okay? Then to that self-control, we add perseverance. This is hupomone. We add the ability to continue on by accessing God's power to allow us to do it. To perseverance, we add godliness. So this is not us becoming a God. This is us trying to focus on and develop biblically the traits that we have been asked to do, which is another way of saying holiness. To godliness, we add brotherly kindness. So we're going to be nice to other Christians. And then to brotherly kindness, we add love. Love, remember, is putting the other person first and doing what is best for them, not what we want. Then it says, if these things are yours, you will bear fruit and you will have fruit in the knowledge of Jesus. Well, that means, how do you get that knowledge of Jesus? That comes from the Bible. And the fruit comes from reading the Bible. Because when you read the Bible, you're struck in the soul to change things. So you do develop the fruit. So then that leads you back to listening, keeping the word, bearing the fruit with patience. You could do that all day long. But there's another sub um, cycle within this. Okay. So this faith boy, he's standing on grace. He also has the option to come down this way and rejoice in his tribulations. Tribulations create perseverance. 
So that's hupomone continuing on. The perseverance, the hupomone, creates character. The character creates hope. What's the hope? Hope of heaven. Hope of being raptured. And hope does not disappoint. Why does it not disappoint? Because God is faithful and he does not lie. So this hope causes the Holy Spirit to pour out God's love into our hearts. God's love, that brings us back to the beginning, which is how we started being justified by faith. So to become godly, remember we are called to be godly, that is to have true love. So with true love, we get true faith. So the whole thing is, is a cycle. I hope this is helping you. I hope you find that interesting and I'll see you next time.